In-floor heating systems are hardly a new concept. The ancient Romans heated the floors of their bathhouses. Today's systems use either electric cables or hot water pipes installed beneath the floor surface. As the floor warms up, the heat radiates to people and objects in the room. For electric radiant heating systems, installers affix installation gauges to the subfloor, then wind electrical cables around those gauges. When there are no objects, such as bathtubs, to work around, installers can roll out a fiberglass mat, which has the cable embedded. Once the cables are in place, the installers lay down the floor. Radiant heating systems can be installed under most types of flooring. It's up to 28% more energy efficient than forced air or baseboard heating. At the core of those electrical heating cables are copper or copper alloy wires, called conductors. An unwinding system feeds each spool of conductor to an extrusion machine. Extrusion machines force molten plastic through a die to form a particular shape. They load the raw plastic pellets into a receptacle, called a hopper, at the top of the machine. The pellets drop down into a heating device, which quickly liquefies them. The machine then forces the molten plastic through a round die, forming a plastic jacket around the conductor passing through. This jacket insulates the bare wire. A water bath cools the still warm plastic to prevent sticking as they wind up the conductor on a spool. The next machine takes two insulated conductors and twists them together into a single strand. This forms a paired conductor. Then the next machine braids 16 spools of triple strand copper wire around the paired conductor. This copper braid is the ground. The ground will capture any electrical leak should the cable get damaged, preventing electrocution. The cable's internal wiring is complete. Now they run it through an alignment jig, which straightens and smooths everything out in preparation for the next extrusion process, which coats the wiring in a final plastic jacket. Then they wind up the cable on a spool to prepare it for packaging. And put one end into a machine that cuts off a few centimeters of jacket. After soldering the two conductors to each other so that the electrical current goes out on one and returns on the other, they insulate this connection from the braided ground with transparent heat shrink plastic. Then they pull the ground over the now insulated end and cover it with a black heat shrink plastic. This seals the end of the cable so that water can't seep in and short out the wiring. Another machine produces the cable which brings power from the wall-mounted thermostat to the heating cables under the floor. It's called the cold lead because it leads to the heating cable, yet itself doesn't heat up. This machine cuts the average production run of 14,000 meters of cold lead cable into several cables of standard length, either 2 or 3 meters long, depending on the product format. The cold lead is comprised of two conductors and a separate ground wire. Workers connect it to the heating cable by fusing conductor to conductor and ground to ground. They protect this junction with a hard plastic cover called a mechanical joint. This too must be sealed to prevent any water infiltration. After all, heating cables are often installed under floors in wet environments such as bathrooms. So they seal the joint by injecting enough polyurethane to fill every nook and cranny. The polyurethane takes three to four minutes to dry, then another 24 hours to fully harden. This machine assembles the other format, the rollout mat with heating cable embedded. First, it winds cable the same way an installer would onto installation gauges. Then it secures it to an adhesive-backed fiberglass mesh. Three strips of adhesive tape above and below reinforce the bond. The mat format is sold by the roll, while the loose cable is packaged in a kit with installation gauges and glue sticks to adhere the gauges to the subfloor. <laughs>